been in queue today. Might do some uh, actual electrical content with this. To make enough resin joints that are fucking uh, here. I've only got one hand, but from that box to here, yeah, huge ones, 240s. But that's a little comedy one there I've got. Um, and I've also got, if anyone has seen resin joint before, that's going to get some resin in it. Not the not the blocks you buy off the special guys, some resins under here. And I've got these, for another know these are, these are called jellies. And I'll show you what they are. These are for what the proper way to connect phone lines up. And I'll show you why shortly. But I'll go and show you what I'm fixing today. And this is the bits I bought to do it properly because as you'll see shortly it's not been done properly by somebody else actual telecommunication content so here's where the problem is this is the problem this joint here that is twisted together and wrapped in tape literally just twisted together wrapped in tape there that is my repair i did that because last time i came that was twisted together and wrapped in tape like it is now but it's in that hole full of water and i know bt haven't done that the cable comes down off their pole there look and there's no way bt put that down there there's no way BT done that joint, but someone has, and that was the problem. I've repaired it, and it's not like that now. What well, I'll tell you for definite about DNOs, distribution network operators, the 11kV stuff and the RV stuff on your houses, yeah? And I'll tell you about BT is, they don't tend to bodge jobs, right? They do them all properly because they have these huge nationwide networks that they want to keep running. So it's not in their interest to bodge things like that. So that's probably been done by, I suspect the cabin might have been here when they built the site, and they've bodged that to the new cabin over there. So I'll just fix it myself. It's not worth fucking getting BT because I think, to be honest, BT ends up there. And if they find that, they'll just charge for it. So I'll just do it myself. So DNOs and BT, you tend to find most of the work is good. And they both spend huge amounts on research and development to make sure that what they're doing on the network will both last and is cost effective. So that is definitely not involving tape and twisting because otherwise they'd be out fixing that every week. So I'll show you how we do this resin joint. So all across the VT network, they use the same kind of cable. I can't remember what size it is. It might be 0.25 millimeter solid or something, yeah? And this is the connector that does it. It's called a jelly. And you use the jelly like this. You use a pair of jelly pliers. If you don't want to close these, they don't close fuller. Because when you put it in the jelly and squeeze it, yeah, you'll notice at the end, there'll be a little ooze. See the little ooze come out? It's not the best video, but what's oozed out there is some Vaseline. And then inside the jelly, this is hard because it's not the right camera. See that little thing? It's got little teeth in it. You put the cables in the end of here, and those teeth go down to the cable in what they call an insulation displacement connector, i.e. it moves the insulation out of the way and grabs onto the core, which is a known size. And then the jelly inside is actually Vaseline, and that makes it a waterproof joint. However, there's no, it's still tensionable. So the jelly makes the joint waterproof, and then I'll put the resin joint on the top just to encapsulate the whole lot and make it nice. So I've took it apart a bit, like, yeah, you can see where the, they go down and the little V, that the thin end of the V moves the insulation, it sits in there, and that's covered with jelly. I hope that makes sense. The only way to connect day cables is via insulation displacement terminals, whether they be overground ones or underground ones like this with jelly in. But you can see that there. It's the only way to do it. No waggos, no ferrules, no chocolate blocks. Always IDC. So just to get it working before, there's the cores that aren't used, and there's these two yellow cores, which I'll come back to in a minute, yeah? These cores that aren't used, I'm going to jelly them all out. So whatever's coming off the pole will end up in the box. But when I went in the box, only three cables were used like normal, and those three cables are just in here, twisted together. I'll re-terminate them all, so if anyone ever comes there, we'll have no need to know his joints here. What's at the pole up there will end up in the room that's over there. Um, you might recognise this from Corey's video. Um, so yeah, so I'll take them apart now, get it all ready. I'll quickly recrimp them before checking the internet's on. The yellow ones here, you see this one, look. See how that's bent? That's made out of copper. These yellow ones, see how they don't bend? That's because they're made out of steel. So because this cable could be in tension, like in that line up there, if that was copper, that'd stretch and bend. So in the BT cables, they have a couple of steel ones which are just in there for the purposes of strength. They're nothing to do with the... Um, connections. It's actually just two cables, look, orange and white they've used, so I'm going to crimp out all of these, and these yellow ones I won't crimp out, because like I say, they're just wise for the tension, I believe. Um, so there's absolutely no point connecting them through. Although they might form part of an earth, I don't know, like that. Maybe I'll just put a fucking jelly on them for the sake of it, just so I know that they go through. Obviously, there's no way of getting them the right way around, but there's no way of spotting them the right way around, so you'll have three yellow cables at one end, connected through the other end. I don't know if these will test or something, but I'll just join everything out there. And I'm gonna keep both cables together like this. And I'll put the joint on like that. 
so it just comes in and out one end because it's not it doesn't have to be a through joint it just has to have the resin in to protect the cable so i'll now do that and i'll show you how the jellies work so get your cable dressed in tied off bring the two colors together like i've done there and cut them so they're the same length put the jelly on they see through for a reason they see through so you can see that both the cables go to the end and pass through the insulation displacement part now all you've got to do is squeeze it, which I'll do off-handed, because I've only got one hand. I'm not an octopus. So I've squeezed it down, look, and now I can see that they're in the IDC terminals, yeah? And when I flick it up there, look, you can see they've both gone into those grooves, which means they'll be okay. So that is a good one, and it's clear so you can inspect it. They don't often make things clear if you don't need to inspect it, because it's expensive to make things clear. And it's always there, so you can do the checks, because you don't want to be going back and do the continuity, you want to know it works. And there's double... It's got two IDC positions, look, so it can get it twice. So I think that should be good. All I'm really mega bad about is these orange ones, but I'll check that before I do the pour, so I'll just do the rest of these now. Right, they're all done. These are the ones doing the business. I'm going to cut these and join them out, then I'm going to go and check the internet comes back, because obviously, without these ones, it's fucking a waste of my time. So I'll cut these ones and do them now. They're jointed. I'm going to put the joint around it dry so it's all ready to pour, if it's okay. Uh, I might have to turn to any problems. I can check those visually. So I'll get this all ready so I can just pour it. Wait for it to start chuck it back in the hole. Laughing! Right, as is the way of working with jellies, I've got Vaseline all over my fingers and everything. And when I'm doing a resin joint like this as well, I never rely on the joint casing to hold the goo. On a little one like this, it just make a bit of a mess. On a big one, the weight forces the joint apart, so I just lather it in tape because I'm not making a Swiss watch. It's not going on fucking Instagram, right? Well, it is. But I don't give a fuck about having loads of tape around it to make it look... To not to make it look pretty, but so the goo don't come out. That's all done in there, keeping that to keep the rain out. We'll go and do a speed check and an internet test. If it's good, we'll pour it with the goo that's in there. So I've come to the main control computer, I've loaded up a Google page, and I've gone to the BBC website, yeah? Because the BBC website never really goes down. And I know this is the latest news. If you just upload, if you bring the Google page up, it'll cache up the Google page. That doesn't mean you're connected. So I've brought the BBC News website which is just what I've always done since I've been doing this for years, and I've connected to that. So that makes me sort of happy. Now I'll do a speed test. Just running Google's own speed test. Seems to be okay. Seems to be matching what I had before through my dodgy joint, which obviously... W that joint I've done would have lasted. Don't know how long it'll last, but it won't last as long as the joint I'm doing now. What I'm getting there is about the same as what I had before, so I'm pretty happy it's on. But that's not the end of this. I'll wait for it to come up so you can see. See what it says. Yeah, your internet speed is fine, your internet should be able to handle, so I'm pretty happy I've got that. So I'm pretty happy I can pour it now. I know I've got the internet, right? But what I don't do is I don't fuck my IT department. Don't fuck around my IT department, right? Because I don't, because it's bad vibes. So what I do now is I give IT a call and just say, can you see it? Have you got all the comms right? Just in case something's gone fucking badly wrong, I don't know. Then when they okay it, I go out there and I pour that resin in, wait an hour and chuck it back in the hole. And that is how you repair a phone line. I think, maybe, I'm just making this fucker up as I've got a lot like I've been doing for the past 21 years, but I'm pretty happy it's on. What I don't do is ring IT for them to tell me now there's no connection. They're good little pre-checks. Any IT system, BBC News, check out today's news, and do a speed test off Google. I'm laughing. So the time it took me to go inside and, and check this, which is all working, it's like pissed it down. The bag's got wet now, but yeah, um, basically squeeze them together, break that seal between them, mix it up thoroughly till the powder's gone, mix it for the amount of time it says, because if it doesn't go off, You've got to start getting it all out there. Mix it up by chucking it round. Get it all out the corners. Pour that in and I'm gone. I'll do a better story on this, but I ain't got a tripod and it's fucking pissed it down. Go on then. I'll put it in my bag. So get this. And you pull this apart like this. These little flaps on it here. Carefully pull that apart. Without it going all over you. Because that is bad. I always do this and squeeze it through. There you go. There we go, look, squeezed it through. It's just sand, that is, and that's a resin, and there's a bit of set and stuff in here. Then I'll pop that through, open it up into a full bag. Just start lobbing it around, that's not a full bag. Fucking hell, I don't know if it's been shot. I'll get it all in the bottom of the bag, and then just start lobbing it around. Look, it doesn't like to mix. It's been the van to get warm as well. You've got a minute of me doing this fucking hour. No, yeah, I'm gonna stop. So I shook it all down to the bottom of the bag lock and I've mixed it there thoroughly and then I cut off the corner like I'm doing icing the cake, the littlest hole I can make, and then pour it in. Don't get it on yourself, because if you do, you can 
pretty much fucking close away. There it goes. Don't get any tools or anything. Get a little tap. Get the air out. Brim it up. What I've done is I've made a mistake of this tray, which I shouldn't have done because now that's stuck there. When it's full, lob the top on. And don't ever fucking touch it again because if you get it on you, you've fucked it. Probably got a minute left now, I don't know. Oh, get in. See you later. So there's a guy on site. I'm going to put this here so no one falls down the hole. There's no one else on site, really. He's working somewhere else, so in about two hours, when that's going off, he'll gently put it in the hole for me. And that's it, it's done. Should have no problems. I'll go and check it again, though, just in case there's no speed. And then that is my repair. Actual electrical content out.